Shall we start? Yeah. Shobindor is still speaking about this secret nature. It is not the earth nature and not the divine nature. It's an in-between nature. The Prakriti or the Shakti who looks after the entrance to the subtle worlds. Perhaps we can call her the mother of dreams. So I'll read on from the break on page 87. A border sovereign is the occult force. A threshold guardian of the earth scenes beyond. She has canalized the outbreaks of the gods and cut through vistas of intuitive sight a long road of shimmering discoveries. The worlds of a marvelous unknown were near. Behind her, an ineffable presence stood. Her reign received their mystic influences, their lion forces crouched beneath her feet. The future sleeps unknown behind their doors. Abysms infernal gaped round the soul's steps and called to its mounting vision peaks divine an endless climb and adventure of the idea there tirelessly tempted the explorer mind and countless voices visited the charmed ear. A million figures passed and were seen no more. This was a forefront of God's thousandfold house, beginnings of the half screened invisible, a magic porch of entry glimmering, quivered in a penumbra of screened light. A court of the mystical traffic of the worlds, a balcony and miraculous facade. Above her lightened high immensities, all the unknown looked out from boundlessness. It lodged upon an edge of hourless time, gazing out of some everlasting now, its shadows gleaming with the birth of gods, its bodies signaling the bodiless, its foreheads glowing with the oversoul, its forms projected from the unknowable, its eyes dreaming of the ineffable, its faces staring into eternity. Life in him learned its huge 
subconscious rear. The little fronts unlocked to the unseen vast. Her gulfs stood nude. Her far transcendences flamed in transparencies of crowded light. So Shobindo has been describing this secret nature. Here he calls her the occult force. And he says that she's a border sovereign. She rules the borderline or the threshold. He says she's a threshold guardian. She's guarding the threshold of the earth scenes beyond. The threshold, it's the, the step that you cross over when you enter a building. Mm -hmm. She, that occult force, has canalized the outbreaks of the gods and cut through vistas of intuitive sight, a long road of shimmering discoveries. So that's what Aswapati is going to explore now. So, uh, Martin, would you read, please? The born of sovereign is the occult force, a threshold guardian of the earth scenes beyond. She has canalized the outbreaks of the world and cut through wisdom of intuitive sight the long road of shimmering discovery. Mm. Anybody would like to ask anything about this sentence? Earth seems beyond. So the earth is different, beyond is different. Right. So that is the So what she, she's guarding the threshold that we can cross over to what is beyond the earth scene that we are familiar with. Hmm? Well, it the and the earth, it it's of the beyond the beyond of the earth scene. Hmm? Is it bridge? No. It says it's a threshold. threshold. Oh. A step to be taken, a borderline. Mm -hmm. so. It's like Dwarapada and the temple. <laughs> Something like that. But she's the ruling force of that area, no? She's a Shakti. And one of the things she's done, she has canalized the outbreaks of the gods. So it's as if the gods sometimes uh, break out of their, their realm, their, their beyond, their higher realms. And this uh, border sovereign has caught hold of their forces, their their outbreaks. No? She's channel, ca channeled them into this borderline region so that everything can meet there. There, on that borderline, one can see a long way, a vista. So when you can see a long way, no? so there are these vistas, wonderful views in different directions. And she has cut through those vistas, those long views, a long road of shimmering discoveries. So one can follow that road and discover many, many surprising new things. 
means? Shimmering. Uh, if you have a tar road and the air gets very hot, you can see the the air shimmering. There's moving light. Yeah. A mirage is sh shimmers, yes. But, uh, so these discoveries, they, uh, we can see them in the distance and they are quivering, moving. But as we get nearer, we'll be able to see them more clearly. You read Bhuvana? The walls of a marvelous unknown area, behind her and in the cover the sun stood. Her ring received their mystic influences. The line forces crouched beneath her feet. The future sleeps unknown behind their doors. Yes. So Aswapati feels and perceives that Close by, there are the worlds of a marvelous unknown that earth seems beyond. No? But it's guarded by this border sovereign. And behind her, there's a much more divine presence, an ineffable presence stood. Hmm? So her reign, the reign of this border sovereign, is receiving the mystic influences of all those worlds, those worlds of a marvelous unknown. And she can command their forces, their lion forces crouched beneath her feet. Sometimes we see the goddess like this, with her feet on, on the lion. No? That represents her control over that particular force. So similarly, here, that border sovereign, she can control those forces of the other worlds. The future, Earth's future, sleeps unknown behind their doors the doors of those worlds of a marvelous unknown. We don't know them yet, but in time we shall reach them, we'll experience them, we will know them. You read? Yes. A reason the internal death long the soul state and call to its mounting vision speak divine, and an endless climb and adventure of idea, their terraces be tempted the explored mind, and countless voices visited the charmed ear, a million figures passed and were seen no more. Yes. So this is a borderline and there are many meeting worlds. No? One thing is that these deep, dark places full of dark forces, hmm? abysms, infernal, they're like hells. There are opening up around the steps of the soul. But also at the same time, um, Peaks divine are calling to the mounting vision of the soul. Climb up here, this way. As he stands there, he's offered this endless climb and adventure of the idea, the creative idea. That's uh, calling to him, tirelessly tempted the explorer mind. Come this way, explore this new possibility. No? So the mind is attracted and there are voices calling, countless voices visited 
the charmed ear. Uh, the ear is charmed by all those invitations. No? And he sees passing in front of him a million figures passing and disappearing, seen no more. Dana Lakshmi. This was a footprint of God's chosen great house. Beginnings of the half screen in the city. The magic forge of entry remains, covered in the penumbra of screen delight, a court of the mystical traffic of the world, the golden and miraculous of the world. So this is the forefront, the facade, the first part that we see of God's thousandfold house. Beginnings of the half screened invisible. It's not fully invisible, it's only half screened. And here we begin to approach there's an entry, a magic porch of entry. It is glimmering, glowing faintly, quivering in a penumbra, a twilight of screened light. And this magic porch of entry is a court, a courtyard of the mystical traffic of the worlds. In front of a great palace, there will always be a big courtyard where many uh, vehicles can park and move around. No? So coming and going, a court of the mystical traffic of the worlds. People, beings from all the different worlds can come and mingle and meet there and pass into the house and pass out of the house, God's thousandfold house. And on that um, forefront, there is a balcony. It's another thing that you'll always find on a big palace because that's where the ruler will come out and show himself. So there's a balcony and this facade, the forefront of this amazing house, all beautifully decorated. Well, this uh, aspect is in the city, is it? It's, he says, the borderline. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. yeah. It's the borderline between here and there. So, the word balcony, hmm. and it's rooted from Tamil word. Yes. Uh, it means palakani. Yes. Of, yes. So the queens can see, but people can't, can't see, see in. Mm. So that's how Panagani became Balkani. Ah, Sarojini. Ever for lightning, lightning, high immensities, all the unknown look out from boundless. It flows upon an edge of our last time, gazing out of some everlasting now, its shadows gleaming with the breath of birth, God. with the birth, birth of God. Its body sign signaling the bodyless. His forehead glowing with the other soul. His forms project from the unknown heaven. His eyes gleaming of the wind table. His face gleaming into the dark Yes. So above her, 
above this threshold guardian. Hmm? There's, we can't even see how high those immensities are leading and they're getting lighter and lighter, more and more light as they go up. Hmm? And uh, to me this reminds me of a gopuram over the entrance of a, of a temple. No? Yes. Um, it's as if uh, all those different levels, those are, uh, it's projecting into the boundlessness. No? There's so many different levels, the infinity, all the unknown looked down from that high tower. And um, on that tower are lodged a whole list of things. That's what the tower looks like, no? Uh, there are these edges and levels, and there there are beings and worlds. They are lodged there on each of these edges, going up and up and up and up. And there is a kind of time, but it's an hourless time, an unlimited time. And what does he see? It's, it's different from what we see on our man-made gopurams. Uh, it's much more subtle. Hmm? It's as if the beings that are there are gazing out of some everlasting now. And it's kind of shadowy. We can't see all the details. But here and there, out of the shadows, are gleaming gods being born, emerging. Hmm? On this tower there are bodies and the function of these bodies is to signal the presence of the bodiless, what is beyond form and shape and limitation. There are forms, and these have been projected, sent out from the unknowable. And there are eyes looking out Eyes that are dreaming of the ineffable, of what cannot be put into words. And there are faces, there are faces staring out, not at our world, staring into eternity, into limitlessness. So Asvapati sees all this. This is the borderline, this is the gate. No. It's foreheads glowing with the oversoul. Yes. Yes, Sri Aurobindo often mentions foreheads and brows which have a kind of light around them. So this light here that's around the brows of these beings is the over-soul, the highest soul, the central being. What is the difference between unknown and unknowable? Well, what is unknown we don't know. What is unknowable we cannot know. But unknown can be known. The unknown can always be known. Our knowledge can always increase. What we don't know today we can know tomorrow. But there's, there's something unknowable with a capital U, the supreme mystery. No. Um, King Aswapati encounters it in the first canto of um, book three. Aurobindo Basu once gave us a very interesting talk about it. And he said this word unknowable, it means unknowable to the mind. It doesn't mean that there's some, even that ultimate mystery can in a way be known, but not by our minds. Only when we reach the oversoul, then we can know it. So that's what happens to King Aswapati at the beginning of book three, the first canto. 
Is he also unknowable? No. No. I mean, I'm just saying that. The unknowable. No, I shouldn't have said no because I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but I think so. I think the unknowable belongs to the transcendent realm. And supermind is a, although it's unknowable to us, it's so high up, still it is a level in the manifestation. At least it is now that Sri Aurobindo has brought it into the manifestation. And that's why he describes it in the Life Divine, the last chapters of the Life Divine. But, uh, we, we can get some conception of what supermind will be like in the manifestation, in evolution. But the unknowable, the mind can't reach it at all. But in another world, I read yesterday in my divine, it tells the scale of the portal, but the body is not gone. Sorry? The spirit. Yes. Come in mortal, infinite, or whatever. But the body, another world in the life divine, I read this passage. Yeah, but the. It, it's intended that eventually the consciousness of, it, of the physical body will become such that it can become immortal. There's a chapter about that, I think it's called the, the... It's in the Life Divine in Book One even. It's about the ascent of the substance as the as the, we have a substance that matches the characteristic of our physical body. But if we develop a higher consciousness, even the substance, the ascending series of substance, it's yeah. called, even the substance will develop and change and become more subtle. Yeah. And that can happen seven times, I think he said. No. Yeah. So that eventually, when we have supramental consciousness, we'll be able to have supramental bodies as well. Yeah. Supramentalized bodies. Yeah. <laughs> so we have one last uh, sentence to read. Uh, Leila. Life in him is huge subconscious prayer. The little frowns unlocked to the unseen vasts. Her gulfs stood mute. Her far transcendences flamed in transparencies of crowded light. Yes. So now this is the life spirit in Aswapati. With this experience of seeing that uh, forefront of God's thousandfold house. The life in him learned to know and to recognize its huge subconscious rear, what is lying behind the surfaces. This might be the inner life. The little fronts, these little uh, surfaces here, they unlocked and revealed the unseen vasts behind them. Her gulfs, all her deep places are revealed. And her far transcendences 
those higher levels going far beyond the manifestation. They are seen flaming above in transparencies of crowded light. Transparent, we can see through them, but those lights are so crowded and dense, hmm, flaming there. So that's the realm of the border sovereign, what she reveals to Aswapati. Ganga Lakshmi, would you read, please? Mm. In line 426, yes. This is the gap. Gaped. Gaped. But it's like making a gap. If you yawn, your mouth gapes, it leaves an empty space, huh? gaped. So it's like that. These, uh, these huge depths, it's as if they just open up around his feet. There you can fall in. <laughs> around the soul can fall in. The dream to order was discovered here, of which the passer and expanded are the scant stuff of our material lives. 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 Yeah. So he, he discovers here on this borderline a giant order, a hierarchy. And our lives are just like the tassels on that uh, and the fringe on that giant order. Have you got a tassel on your shawl, Sarojini? You have tassels? Yes, this is a tassel. So, the, the edge, the fringe. So, our lives are just like the, uh, the few threads hanging off the edge of that giant order. Scant means very little, not enough. Scant stuff of our material lives. Actually our material lives are more than enough for us to cope with, but for the soul it's not enough. Uh, Suresh. Is to our universe whose figures play the secrets which in subconscious play thought fear the letters of, it, of its glowing code a map of subtle sign supposing thought was held upon a bar of inmost mind. Yes. So we live in this overt universe, this universe that we can see and touch, which is obvious to us. And this overt universe is full of things, figures. But all these things are hiding secrets that are behind, merged, melted away, in superconscient light. But now, to Aswapati's eyes and understanding, he can read the code, the glowing code of this overt universe. It's as if somebody has hung up, as if on a wall, a map of subtle signs, which is indicating the, how that code is working, that glowing code. Those signs, subtle signs, are going far beyond thought. You know? And it's as if that map, that map which shows him how to make sense of everything in the universe, 
It's been hung on a, a wall of inmost mind, not the surface mind, not even the subtle mind, deepest innermost mind. This is happening to Aswapati. Mina. Yes. Yes, this is this map. No? This mo map lights up, it illumines all these concrete images, these solid things in the world. No? Uh, it lights them up so that it's understood that they are symbols, significant symbols. All these ordinary things, light switch, rod, grill, um, <laughs> fan, light, all of these things actually are symbols which if we can read the map, this map of subtle signs, we'll be able to understand. No? This map is offering to one who has intuition, who is intuitive, who can explain the map and exegete somebody who can explain something. No? It's reflex. I think here it means it's reflection. It's reflection of the eternal mystery. The meaning of all these signs, all the mysteries of the universe get revealed. And what does he see? This is one of my favorite bits of uh, Savitri, Kanapan. Ascending and descending fixed life's course, the serried kingdoms of the graded law plunge from the everlasting into time, then glad of a glory of multitudinous mind, and rich with life's adventure <coughs> delight, and packed with the beauty of matters, shapes and views, climb back from time into undying self, up a golden ladder carrying the soul, tying with diamond threads the spirit's extremes. Yes, this is what he sees. It's a moving picture. He sees rising upwards and coming downwards between the poles, the extremes of life he can see the serried kingdoms. They're in a series, they're arranged in order, this giant order. Hmm? The serried kingdoms of the graded law. Each grade, each level has its own law, going higher and higher or going lower and lower. These kingdoms they come all the way down from the everlasting into time. And they are here in time for a while. But then they become so rich, they are glad of a glory of multitudinous mind. All the many, many minds. And rich with life's adventure and delight and packed with the beauty of matter, shapes and hues. They, these kingdoms are climbing back up from time into undying self. And they are climbing up a golden ladder. This is the golden ladder that carries the soul up to the everlasting and back down again. Into, into time. And that golden ladder is tying 
with diamond threads the spirit's extremes, the poles that the spirit experiences from the most subtle to the most material, the darkest, the densest. Mm. But is the same? Hmm? But is the same? What is the same? Extreme pole. No, they are different. Different? Yes. Yeah. Yes, a magnet has poles, no? Yeah. A positive and a negative yeah. pole. They are attracting each other, yeah. but they are different. They are uniting two opposites. That's what is happening here. There's the uppermost levels and the lowermost levels. Of course, it's the same thing that's being united, but the manifestation, the expression is completely different. And that's what's so wonderful. Yeah. Alice. In this drop, from consciousness to consciousness, each leaned on the occult in conscience power. The fountain of its needed ignorance. Arch mason of the limits by which it lives. Yes. So the, the levels, the kingdoms are coming down, down from higher consciousness to lower consciousness. And in order to do that, in order to achieve a lower consciousness, each of them leans on it, relies on the occult inconscience power, the power of inconscience, which is the fountain, the source of that needed ignorance, its limitations, that uh, the power of the inconscient is the archmason, the master builder of the limits by which each of these levels lives. That's on the way down. But on the way up, in this soar from lower consciousness to higher consciousness, each of these levels lifted its tops, its higher levels, to the one above it, which it has come from. That one above it is the origin of all that it has ever been and is the home of all that it can become. Each of the levels looks up to the one above it because that's where it has come from and that's where it can go to. I think we'll stop there today because there's a very long sentence coming. It's because King Asvapati can see this golden ladder that in the next book, in book two, He's able to step into that other world and start climbing up, exploring all the different levels. It doesn't represent the evolution and the evolution. No. Yes, it does. Yes. In, in the involutionary process, then the higher levels limit themselves more and more to make these lower kingdoms until they come right down to to matter, which contains all the rest, it's being kaleidoscoped, and then there's the life in the material universe, and then there's the return, the evolutionary return back to the origin. Mm -hmm. so this it's can such a lovely picture. This can do the basis of the next uh, Yes. Yeah, the preparation for the next book, yes. Hmm. We'll stop there for today.
A border sovereign is the occult force, a threshold guardian of the earth scenes beyond. She has canalized the outbreaks of the gods and cut through vistas of intuitive sight a long road of shimmering discoveries. The worlds of a marvellous unknown were near. Behind her, an ineffable presence stood. Her reign received their mystic influences. Their lion forces crouched beneath her feet. The future sleeps unknown behind their doors. Abysm's infernal gaped round the soul's steps and called to its mounting vision peaks divine. An endless climb and adventure of the idea there tirelessly tempted the explorer mind and countless voices visited the charmed ear. A million figures passed and were seen no more. This was a forefront of God's thousandfold house, beginnings of the half-screened invisible. A magic porch of entry, glimmering, quivered in a penumbra of screened light a court of the mystical traffic of the worlds, a balcony and miraculous façade. Above her lightened high immensities. All the unknown looked out from boundlessness. It lodged upon an edge of hourless time, gazing out of some everlasting now, its shadows gleaming with the birth of gods, its bodies signalling the bodiless, its foreheads glowing with the oversoul, its forms projected from the unknowable, its eyes dreaming of the ineffable, its faces staring into eternity. Life in him learned its huge subconscient rear. The little fronts unlocked to the unseen vasts. Her gulfs stood nude. Her far transcendences flamed in transparencies of crowded light. A giant order was discovered here, of which the tassel and extended fringe are the scant stuff of our material lives. This overt universe, whose figures hide the secret merged in superconscient light, wrote clear the letters of its glowing gold.
a map of subtle signs surpassing thought was hung upon a wall of inmost mind. Illumining the world's concrete images into significant symbols by its gloss, it offered to the intuitive exeget its reflex of the eternal mystery. Ascending and descending twixt life's poles, the serried kingdoms of the graded law plunged from the everlasting into time, then, glad of a glory of multitudinous mind, and rich with life's adventure and delight, and packed with the beauty of matter's shapes and hues, climbed back from time into undying self up a golden ladder carrying the soul. Tying with diamond threads the spirit's extremes. In this drop from consciousness to consciousness, each leaned on the occult inconscience power, the fountain of its needed ignorance, archmason of the limits by which it lives. In this saw from consciousness to consciousness, each lifted tops to that from which it came, origin of all that it had ever been, and home of all that it could still become. 